Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today, September the 10th, 2019, and we have a great list. Let's, Miss Vegas. Yeah, we have a really great list uh, with a great close. So we have a great list. So we're going to talk about the IWM, which is the Russell 2000 um, ETF. We're going to talk about Apple, McDonald's, Macy's, and Tesla. So I just want to start with the IWM, really trading this from an options perspective. Um, and just to, you know, for those of you that may not be familiar with this, this is the Russell 2000 index and very different obviously than the S&P 500. This, just to keep it simple, this just measures the performance of the Russell 2000 companies uh, with lower price to book ratios and lower forecasted growth values. So this is kind of the benchmark for the small cap stocks. And that's really important um, because as you know, the S&P 500, the SPY and the Dow Jones index, they track the large cap stocks. So we need to track obviously the small caps and this is where the IWN comes in. And we can see that there's been a lot of money flowing in here, which is really, really nice for the small cap stocks. So we traded this on the option side. We spotted the money going in last week. We bought option calls for expiry this Friday the 13th. Uh, we paid 17 cents, 20 cents, and I sold them all today. And uh, sold them all for a big chunk around 102. And I basically sold the rest off at 89 because the stock was, the uh, option contract was pulling back and I didn't want to lose my juicy profit. So um, again, just goes to show small accounts that would have bought 10 contracts at 17 cents, $170. You could have sold them for almost a dollar and you would have made like $800 profit. So that's amazing. Um, so that's why we love helping small accounts. So Jim, let's hear about this IWM because you charted this perfectly. I did. You sure did. Well, let's look at the yearly chart first and see what we're talking about here. Pull up the yearly daily. We did have a yearly low down here at 125.81. And she kind of had a double or even a quadruple. I don't know. She topped, top, top, topped, and tried to top again right back here at 160. So here we are after hours at 153.86 IWM. Let me get off, get rid of some of these things here. Get rid of that. Kind of pull that down so it ain't so blurry. But that's the yearly chart right there. So we'll pull this up to a daily, or at least a 20 day, one hour. And right now we broke out of that resistance level which was right here at 150.99. So the next resistance was 153.84, and we called that most of the day, and that's the one we had to hit and break. And we finally did 154.04 after hours. So our next resistance is 154.27. If we can get up past that, if not, it's going to pull back, and I don't see it going no lower than 151, right around that area no lower than that and she'll probably go to that first support level at 152.28 and the resistance that we got to get to is going to be at 154.27 and that's IWM and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Apple yeah so you know what Apple had some phenomenal um, action going on I mean today they had their little event and uh, they were going to obviously showcase the um, new iPhone, and they were also going to talk about Apple TV streaming. So they are releasing the um, iOS 13. It's a software update, by the way, for the model iPhone 6. That's coming up on September 19. They said that the new upgrades will have new features. This new iPhone is going to have three cameras on the iPhone 11 Pro. And then they have one called the Pro Max, and apparently you can record multiple videos at a time. 
I mean, I don't know. I guess this is going to be for someone who does special events or something. They're trying to target, I guess, professional videographers, they said, um, so that people can shoot better quality photos. So that's interesting. Um, so the costs will vary. Uh, the new iPhone 11 Pro uh, will cost $999 to $1,099 for the Pro Max. And if you just want the iPhone 11, it's going to be $699. And then they also talked about Apple TV. They said it's going to be the cheapest television streaming service on the market. Um, remember when Disney, if you remember, Jim, back in April, Disney yep. talked about streaming Disney Plus at six ninety nine a month. Yep. Well, Apple shocked us today because they said they're going to be competitive and they're launching November 1st. And you know what? They're going to charge $4.99 wow. a month. That is crazy. Like Netflix is $12.99. Um, CBS is nine ninety nine, Amazon Prime's eight ninety nine, Disney six ninety nine, and Apple went for the jugular and charging four ninety nine. So that is just crazy. Um, but this is what I want to just mention. You know, Apple is up because of the subscription. They're shifting towards subscription services. Um, you know, they have a lot of products. They're also into their arcade gaming subscription, which is going to launch next week, September seventeenth. So Apple's just doing so many things. And, you know, after their little um, launch, they had a, you know, the stock went really wild, but then it pulled way back down to like 213.35. And I was like, wow, no one really liking the news. And then it pulled back even more. And I thought, wow, I guess this news is a flop. And then out of nowhere towards the close, the market and Apple went absolutely crazy. So Jim, Give me your thoughts on Apple. Well, here we are again with another, another nice little run. Here's even a 20-day chart. We had to break a resistance level from what we had the other day at 216.36. And we proved that right into close here, right into after hours, which ran all the way up to 216.92. And this is Apple. And we really do like Apple, especially when it pulls back. It has these pretty, you know, hefty heavy duty sell offs and usually they're a buying opportunity and this last run's been a, on a five day run and then we had to break that double top and we did the resistance was here at 214.17 and that was a resistance that we had to break and we did and she pulled back and then kind of consolidated and then bam we did it today so this is apple i think Probably support level is going to be right here at the 214.17 area. Going to be your first one. And then your second is going to be at 212.74. Should be your low. I mean, if it goes any lower, then you've got this solid one here at 210.61. With the resistance that we've got to break is going to be that 217 area. And this is going to be Apple. And the next one we're going to talk about is mcdonald's yeah we love big macs and we love mcdonald's and jim told me the other day he had a big mac yep um so you know mcdonald's had some news today i mean they're definitely you know it's one it's a fintech stock um i mean you know the company you know people might think why well you know what the, the companies definitely keeps looking at what they call tech acquisitions and they recently buying a prente i hope i'm pronouncing it right but i'm going to call it a prente um and they bought them and they're going to start up in um, Silicon Valley. They're calling, they're creating a group called McD Tech Labs. Can you believe this? Like McDonald's is creating tech labs. Um, and they're going to have the founding members of this Apprente company. One of the co-founders, his name's Itamar Arel. He's gonna become the VP of the McDonald's Tech Labs. And they're going to expand the team. They're gonna be hiring engineers, more data scientists, and a lot of technical experts. They want to um, grow their technology infrastructure and they want to meet the expectation of the customers. They want to make it very easy for obviously their staff to serve the customer, but also make the experience for us if when we go to McDonald's, whether we go into drive through or ordering from the app or we're going into the store and ordering, they want to make it a very seamless, fast, quick um, process. So I got to say, this is quite interesting that McDonald's is opening up a McD lab in Silicon Valley. Like who would think McDonald's would be doing this? This is just insane. 
Uh, so this is interesting. So Jim, let's hear about McDonald's because you were trading this from a reversal point and yep. I'd like to hear about your uh, option. Well, uh, just it was just interesting big sell-off that happened today. It's one of them big old huge fish hooks. So it just dropped from, I mean, it, it had to triple top up here at 220 last week. And then all of a sudden, here we are down here, dropped 10 points. So I jumped in this the first time around and took it all the way and scalped it and got back in it. And then when I got back in it, it went down on me. So it kind of pulled back. And I'm just a little bit in the hole on the second trade on it right now. But this is MCD, and the option that I was in was, oh, right now it's this, uh, the 212 strike for September the 20th, and I'm in at 139, and right now it's at 132, 136, and I only have five contracts of it right now. So I'm down a little bit on it, but... And that's M C D McDonald's. And let's talk about the chart a little bit. Definitely had a real hard pullback. I kind of had a trend line that I didn't want it to fail. Once it did, it just kind of sewed off. And I thought it was just overdone. So I'm thinking when I come in here tomorrow, this is going to get back up here to this. Um, I have up here right around 211.31 is what I wanted to hit today. We come real close to hitting it. And then once we got right up to it, she kind of found a resistance level at 210.77. And then she pulled on back. And let's pull this up to the daily one minute. You can see what I'm talking about, the sell-off. And I just watched this. I said, Vegas, this is, I mean, this yeah. is too much. And it just kept pulling back, pulling back. So 208.28. And she bounced up a little bit, then she kind of pulled back and had a double bottom, and now we're at a pivot point here right around the 209.76. So the low support's 207.65. The resistance we got a break is going to be that 211.31. That's McDonald's. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be M. Yes, yeah, so M for Macy's. I mean, I've been watching this one for a little while. Uh, definitely. I mean, I still, you know, shop there, especially like I like to buy perfume at Macy's. I think they have good stuff. Um, you know, Macy's, um, obviously their sales growth had slowed down over the past year and they're looking to do a little bit of a rebound. They had a lot of little obstacles regarding their profits, mainly because of increased delivery costs, labor costs, and obviously competition. So the cost pressure has been very important to Macy's. And um, they had an investors conference last week and the executives did present their long awaited cost cutting plan. And they expect to reduce the annual cost by 400 million to $550 million within two to four years, which is above the company's usual productivity improvements. And what they're planning to do is uh, they're going to uh, roll out an initiative called hold and flow. And so what they're going to do, rather than distribute all their inventory to all the stores, it's going to hold back some inventory, maybe about 30%. They want to see if the product is selling well. If it does, then they'll release more. And then the, apparently this will lead to higher sales in stores that see a strong demand. And then they might limit uh, putting some of the product in some stores that don't sell as well. So this is kind of like a little bit of a Macy initiative. They're going to tweak their for uh, fulfillment and um, you know they're, they're doing a lot of like you know specific you can read more about it if you want I can put the link in our in the video for you guys um, but we've been following the money on this one here and there's been a lot of money flowing into the Macy's actual uh, stock and I'm watching this really from an options perspective um, that Macy's had a lot of what you call dark pool trades and I saw a lot of money going in there yesterday and um, you know what? We're in some of these option calls here for the $16 strike and the 1650s. And we're already in the money, um, a dollar and 50 cents in some cases, uh, depending which ones the room took. Uh, but we're very pleased 
this was how Macy's is performing. The volume's great. Today it had 21.87 million shares traded. I think that's very good for Macy's. And hopefully we can see this, uh, you know, the company turning around. I mean, I think the stock is underpriced for what I think the company should be. But again, they have to just prove themselves and the investors have to feel confident again in the Macy's brand. So Jim, let's hear about Macy's chart. Well, I'm going to just give a short little preview just by looking at the yearly chart. We did have kind of place where we had to break a resistance level. And that resistance level, uh, by looking at the yearly daily, to me would be the 1676 area, 1676. And we did that today, and there's a big gap that needs to be filled. And that gap to that top of that line is going to be right here right around the 1922 I think this could be like a momentum play into Christmas season it could have a nice little run up and then maybe start puttering around hit that 19 dollar if it does get up to 19 and create a hard resistance and then maybe create, create some kind of channel in between that 17 and 19 dollar area but this is going to be Macy's for right now, support level is going to be no lower than probably right around this 1626 area. Resistance that we got to break is going to be the high that we had today at 17, 1711 or 1710. So we're going to put that in here for right now. If I get that 1710, 1711, it ain't going to matter. It's going to be right in there. So right at 1710 is what we got to break. And then we have that little, uh, I guess, gap play up all the way to $19. This is one that's going to be on watch tomorrow, Macy's. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Tesla. Yeah, so, you know, Tesla, you know, I was reading one of these analysts that wrote a report. I mean, not that everyone believes everything analysts say, but I still like to read the, the data. And they were mentioning, you know, that Tesla is still far ahead of the competition regarding in being in the electric car market and in the, you know, comparison to other luxury brands like Mercedes, BMW, Jaguar, and Audi. And, uh, you know, they're slowly creeping up on Tesla, and they're soon going to be releasing luxury uh, electric vehicles as well. However, Tesla is still maintaining the lead. It's not only a winning in the branding game, but they are doing things different than some of their competitors. And one of the things they got going for them is the battery life. Um, so, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things happening here at Tesla. Some people think it's junk, you know, the, the, in terms of the company. Um, but you know what? I think it's good. It's looking, it's looking stronger. It's definitely outpacing their competition. And I think um, they're improving. And I think we can see that, um, you know, the executive team is, is, you know, shaping things around. I think they're trying to, um, you know, obviously Elon Musk, well, really his tweets are not as, uh, you know, sporadic there. Um, but I think the board is really working hard to uh, give the image um, that it needs to have and to make sure that Tesla gets the improvement that's needed to reinstill the faith in shareholders. Um, so I'm quite pleased to see that it is trading currently um, at these levels here and uh, had a very nice move today over the 235 and even after hours you know it went to 235 you know 50s and then 80s um, so Jim I'd like to hear about Tesla because I'm in some option calls here for the 245 calls and got those at 40 cents and those expire on Friday so well, let me hear what you have to say about Tesla well, we kind of have a little uh I would say almost a yearly pivot point area right around the 250. So once it gets up to the 250 area, it kind of chickens out. Last time it got up here, it was right around the 243 area and decided to pull back from then and pulled back and had a low down here that, you know, we hollered out in the room right around that 210. If you remember me talking about it a while back. So I'm going to call that 211.83 a support level for right now. But right, so we're moving up to that. What I'm saying to that 
probably going to be your pivot point on the year, which is going to be a resistance. And that's going to be that the 240 area, 241.76, somewhere in that area right in here. To, I mean, it could go as high as to 244. Let's pull up the 20 day. You better look at it on the 20 day, one hour. So you, as you talk about the 20 day, one hour, we have a resistance level right here, right around the 228. 23 and we busted past that already and created kind of like a trend in the past four days from right down here at 219 I'll let me draw this trend line being as I see it we'll start right there we'll just go with the bottom of the wicks here So I'm going to think support's going to be right around this little above 230. That's going to be your support level. And the resistance that you are right now, you're on a 20-day resistance up here at 235.61. So she needs to go ahead and break on up. The next resistance to break is going to be the 238.48. If not, but right now she's got the mustard and the strength today with the higher lows and the higher highs kind of squeezed right now to break this double top and that's where you are right now at the 235.61 so we come in tomorrow and we're going to, we might be up here around 238.48 and it's Tesla a little support 228.23 right here where we had this mountain we tried to break these other times and we couldn't do it so that's going to be your support area the 228.23 with a resistance to break the 235.61 on Tesla. And that does it for the aftermarket report. Miss Vegas? Yeah, you know what? Thank you everyone for your time. I, you know, we try to keep these limited to five so that you can be focused for tomorrow. Market's looking strong. Hope it stays like this tomorrow and uh, that we have a great trading day and that you all have a great trading day and trade green again welcome to come by visit us in the room um we've met so many great people so feel free to come by and we'd love to connect with you have a great night and see you tomorrow all right this is the aftermarket report with vegas and jim please follow us on this hit this little tweeter bird right here and bring us to our our um stock twit or uh twitter account hit that follow button right there i love stocks and today's date is september the 10th 2019 and we love stocks